Hello, it's Joe here for Joyrider TV. Uh, today, as part of this preparation process, I'm going to be looking at changing the rigging for new rigging on a Hobie 16 mast. First, what we're going to do is this rigging is quite old, and we can see we've got we've got some stuff going on here. Uh, I don't know where this guy came from. Oh, we've actually got a trapeze wire missing, and then. You see, you can see here there's a crack here. So when you're checking your rigging, this is stuff to look for. This is a good pre-season check. And we've got all sorts of bad things, potential issues happening here. We've got some cracks here. So it is well time to change the rigging. So first thing is we're gonna take this rigging off and then we are going to clean the mast up before putting new rigging on. Okay, so I've, uh, I've untied all the rigging from the bottom of the mast, so that will all just uh, come off now. I have taken the, all the trapeze gear off the bottom of the trapeze wires. I've taken the chain plates from the bottom of the shrouds. Um, so now we just need to take the rigging off the mast. We'll take out the main halyard and then we'll be ready to give the mast a clean before putting the new rigging on. Uh, with a lot of stuff like this that involves uh, needing shackles that need to be uh, very tight so they won't come undone or to undo those very tight shackles rather than using pliers or a shackle key I use an adjustable spanner like this so we get maximum power to tighten or loosen that shackle. There we go. I'm keeping all my shackles just in the same place. Yep. And then this bad boy. Okay, I'll just put this down. And if we go, so we'll take this off the mast. Good idea to check the quality of your shackles as well, because uh, it's no point changing your rigging if your shackle's not going to survive yeah this shroud we've got cracking appearing just here yeah it's just generally quite old i think this rigging's done a good few years maybe three or four years and you see this top of the four stay if you've got any wires that are going like that there's no protection there for the wire so that is uh, really in need of help so there we go uh, while we're here we'll take out the main halyard as well so we're going to reuse the rope because the main halyard rope on here actually uh, isn't under much strain in a, well, it's not under any strain while you're sailing. It's just pulling the sail up. Okay, so we're gonna reuse that and then we'll just pull this through. We've caught something else on the way up. We'll just uh, ping him out. here we go out we come lovely something else worth checking is just the quality of these jib halyard blocks uh, there was a bad batch probably about 10 years ago uh, where they were breaking up here at the top 
so just check for any cracking in those blocks there and if they are cracking of course uh, it's worth replacing them okay so we're going to clean the mast um, we're using mystery spray number one this is something that I've concocted whether it's any good or not we'll see but um, I used it on a previous mast and that came out pretty well uh, so basically what I've got here you're not going to believe it but it is a concentrated lemon and vinegar mix which apparently is very good for cleaning if you're uh, if you know about this sort of stuff and you can help everyone with what they should use to clean their mast put in the comments below but I'm using vinegar which has had lemons in it for about a month uh, soaking and this will leave the mast smelling lemon fresh and give it a little sparkle as well and it's free well near enough free so uh, we can live with that oh that smells good mmm Excellent, smells good. Uh, that stuff incidentally is also quite a nice salad dressing if you uh, need something to put on your, your salad. So uh, now we've done that, the next stage is, uh, this has been suggested to me by our sail maker and he said to spray it with, this is a lanolin spray which um, does all of these things. Um, so I'm just gonna spray the rivets and the fittings with this stuff and apparently it'll uh, help things somehow. Again, comment in the comments below if you know more about using the lanolin spray. So just a little. And the other side. Okay, so with the uh, new cables, the first one I'm going to put on is the main halyard. I find it's a good idea to do that first because then um, you can pull it tight and it's out of the way. So on the main halyard, we've got one eye, which is a, a soft eye. So there's no thimble in there. And that's the one that will pass over the roller at the top. Okay, so sometimes you can just push this through, but um, a lot of the time it's a little bit too stiff. So what we'll do is we'll take a thin rope, we'll pass that, around the roller there it is then I'll just tie that on using a bowl in there bowl stick let's hope it's not too juicy to get in there Okay, and then that will just pull this 
through. There we go. So that's if it's a bit tight, we can use another rope just on there. Then we've got our shackle. This is the six mil Ronstan shackle for the main halyard on a 16. So we'll put that on there now. And then this one is gonna go all the way down to the other end of the mast. Okay, and I'll just leave that there. And we'll attach the, the rope part of the main halyard. So I'm gonna use what I like to call a kite surfer's knot here, where we just tie a thumb knot in the end of the rope. And then one hitch, and then that's on there. Okay, and then we're just going to take this down to this end as well. I'm going to grab him. And then making sure that they're both going up the same side. We'll just take the rope part, pass it through the horn cleat at the bottom of the mast, back up to the shackle, and we'll pull that fairly tight and then that will be out of the way nice okay so next we've got our new forestay just going to put the mast on it the other side at this time it's worth checking the mast tang as well the part that all the rigging goes on to because there's a lot of load that goes on here and these can start to wear at the bottom edge or they can start to split. Um, so just have a look at that and make sure that that doesn't need replacing as well. Because if there are any cracks in there, that is uh, a disaster waiting to happen. Oh yeah. If you have got new rigging, just take your time when you're uncoiling it. Because uh, That way you're less likely to end up with a tangled mess to untangle straight away. Okay, so on the fourth day at the top end, it's got what is called a pigtail as part of it. And that pigtail is what the jib halyard is going to attach onto. So we're just gonna slap him on, lovely. And I'm just gonna do up the shackle very loosely just to hold it. And we're gonna put the, the jib halyard on first. So with the jib halyard, we just need to know which one is the loose end, uh, which is this end, the end that's not going to the other block, because that needs to be on the side closer to the mast. So here we go, we're gonna use our four millimeter Ronstan shackle. Of course, if you've got one. Of course, with older boats, this uh, might be different, or I'm not sure if on the American boats, this is a different system. All right, so I'm gonna tighten that up later. So we're just gonna take this loose end of the jib halyard, and very important that this just passes through this fair lead here, because this will stop the jib battens getting caught on that. So now I'll take the rest of the jib halyard as well, pulling it down here. And we'll just check at this point for any twists in that jib halyard purchase system. No, it looks good. 
and then on this which is a I think this changed in 2003 in Europe the jib halyard system at the bottom is uh, it goes through the pulley through a pulley then through a cleat around the cleat so I'm just going around the first pulley here pulling enough through so that then I can get it onto this cleat I won't go through this cleat at this time because I don't want to put don't want to have it under so, sort of spring tension the whole time all right so that's done next we're going to go for our shrouds so we've got a brand new pair of shrouds from Hobie Cat Europe very nice again we're not just going to let the shrouds ping open because uh, we'll have to untangle them afterwards so instead going to uncoil them nicely and then one little mistake I've just made is putting this under tension so just going to loosen this off otherwise it's going to be very difficult to attach the other rigging up there so just loosening that off and then the shrouds this may seem obvious one on that side of the forestay and one on that side of the forestay doesn't matter what's going on with them so much at the moment as long as you've got them in the right order so we've got shroud forestay shroud excellent okay so now we'll get the trapeze wires okay so there's a few ways that we could do this putting the trapeze wires onto this shackle um, it's not a perfect design uh, where you've got so many things going on to one shackle but um, in the past what we've been doing is putting one trapeze wire onto each side of the pin and then the other ones onto the the D part of the shackle but that's really awkward to get on so what I've op opted for more recently is just what you might think of is more conventional just putting everything onto the hoop the D part of the shackle and then popping it on the mast again in the comments below put what what do you do with your trapeze wires on this shackle um, and what has worked for you and what's been successful um, but this is a very straightforward way of doing that okay so we're now going to take our adjustable spanner to tighten the shackles up because we really don't want that coming undone so the six mil ron stand oh sorry the eight mil ron stand that we've got here it's a strong shackle so we can give it some beans because we don't want that coming undone oh no if your shackle has got a hole going through the pin you can actually put a wire or a small line onto there to make sure it can't actually physically come undone so I've I've done that up pretty much as tight as I can this one I'm gonna be a little bit more sensitive with because it's smaller and I don't want to break it it's unlikely that I would break it so I'm just holding the spanner from a bit further down and that is really tight now okay so all that's left is I'm going to tidy up the wires at this stage because I've got a lot of boats to do I'm not going to put the chain plates back on all the trapeze adjusters I'm going to do that when I come to put the uh, mast on the boat but for now that is as far as I'm going to take it I'm just going to tidy the wires up to make sure but they're not going to get in a mess when I move the mast and that will do for now 
hope this has been interesting and informative and useful and perhaps something that you are hoping to see uh, but it is very good idea to replace your rigging occasionally to prevent your mast from coming down because if you're sailing somewhere without safety cover and your mast comes down you could be in a really bad situation so make sure that your rigging is in good condition I'd say that is the most important thing to check with your boat and of course the bunks. Thanks very much.